Howdy folks, my name is Richie, aka Bog Otter. As we approach the open beta of Hearthstone, I suspect we'll have a large influx of new players to the game, so I thought it would be a good idea to highlight some functional decks that new players can construct using nothing more than the basic cards you unlock for reaching level 10 with the class. In this video, we'll be looking at a basic mage deck, which should perform reasonably well against your friends, or in practice mode, or even against random opponents in play mode. Let's take a look at the deck. So as I mentioned before, we are using only basic cards, so we're going to actually filter out all of our cards by basic set by using the filter option on the bottom. And you can see you have a much more limited selection of what you can put in your deck. Obviously, if you have some better cards that you want to swap in, uh, do so, and you'll probably perform even better. But I'm going to show you what I included in the basic mage deck right here. So I'm starting off with two arcane missiles as the only one drops in the deck. They deal three damage randomly split amongst enemy characters. These are good, uh, especially in the early game when you don't have a lot of uh, things on the board. You can actually kill some two toughness creatures or two health creatures with uh, with arcane missiles and that's one of the advantage they have over arcane explosion if you if you feel like you're getting we need to death with a lot of uh, two ones or one one creatures feel free to swap in arcane explosions but I went with the arcane missiles for this deck Frostbolt at the two drop deals three damage and freezes a target it's absolute staple for a mage deck it is a very very powerful card next up we have our first neutral creature this is the acidic swamp ooze and it's two mana and you get a three power creature which is just awesome this is actually one of the more powerful two drops in the game he has the battle cry to destroy your opponent's weapon which comes in great handy against those classes that have weapons don't make the mistake of throwing this down on turn two against the warrior paladin rogue shaman or hunter it's better to keep it in your hand and wait for them to play a weapon of some sort so you actually get some more utility out of this card next up i'm going with the kobold geomancer this isn't the most powerful creature for a two drop you can see compared to the Swamp Booze's stats, it's actually only a 2-2 creature, which isn't ideal. But the spell damage can come in handy in this deck, as you'll see we have two Arcane Missiles, two Frost Bolts, two Fireballs, and two Flame Strikes, and it'll, it'll synergize with any of those spells. And it's also a good 2-drop creature. Remember, we're limited to basic cards here, so there aren't a lot of uh, options for 2-drops that uh, that can compare. You could swap in Bluegill Warriors if you really want to get the jump with a charge, but I, I think Cobalt Geomancer is going to fare uh, as a better card that you can play later in the game and still get some uh, utility out of it. Novice Engineers are next. Another two drop. Uh, they're not going to be much of an offensive creature, but they help you uh, get more even card draw out of the deck. You're going to have more consistency with the deck because the more card draw you got, the better chance you have of drawing uh, the cards you really need to make the deck work. And that's also why we're throwing Arcane Intellect in here. This is another mage card specific that is a, just a staple. You uh, replace the card and you get to draw like one extra card on top of it for three mana. Shattered Sun Cleric is next. It's a 3-3 creature, which isn't great for three mana, but you can give a friendly minion plus one plus one and hopefully one that you've already played the previous turn so we can attack right away and trade up against creatures that are more valuable or actually just, you know, hit for more damage. So Shattered Sun Cleric is a great card to include. We're going to go with two fireballs. You can't play a basic mage deck without two fireballs. It's just such a great card. You can use it to remove some troublesome creatures, keep creatures with taunt, or maybe even just hit the uh, enemy directly and help whittle down their health. Polymorph. Uh, there's two of them going into this deck. This is your answer to anything that is huge. If somebody plays a legendary against you, polymorph it. If somebody plays a huge taunting creature that you can't seem to get rid of, Polymorph it. This is your, you know, you get two of these in the deck and this is your answer to anything that's ex extremely troublesome. Next up, we're going to look at the Chillwind Yeti. This is a deceptively good card. New players might overlook this and go, oh, it's just a 4-5. He does nothing special. But it's actually one of the most efficient cards in the game. For four mana, you're getting a 4-5 creature. And what's important is that five health. If you look over here and all the other basic cards uh, that drop at four, you've got the Chillwind Yeti and then you have everything else in the four slot here. Nothing can kill the Chillwind Yeti. Yeti by itself. So you're looking at putting something on the board that your opponent will more than likely have to spend more than one card to deal with, and that gives you card advantage and board control. So Chillwind Yeti is an absolute beast of a card. If you happen to go second and you get the mana coin and you get this out on turn three, well, even better. The Ogre Magi is a solid card. It's nothing It's nothing great. You can see that it has one less health than the Yeti, but the spell damage, again, like the Kobold, this could really help uh, get, get the damage up on your Fireballs and your Frostbolts to take out bigger and bigger creatures so i put two of those in the deck and it's a solid card 
Senjin Shield Master is next, and he is not the beefiest card. He's not the best card, but he does have Taunt, which can help stall the game a little bit and give you some breathing space while you wait for something better to come along. He is a solid card, however, and we throw him in as a four drop. Water Elemental is next, and this is a mage-specific card designed really to control the board. Just like the Chill Wind Yeti, it cannot be killed or is not likely to be killed by a single creature on turn four. It, it will take multiple cards to take this guy out. And also has the added benefit of when you attack and you hit something it freezes that minion so that they miss their next turn of attacks which is just great on turn six we got the boulder fist ogre another very efficient vanilla flavored card just really good stats for the price and uh, this is just the guy you want to come out late in the game to try to help seal the deal for you and then we finish up the deck with two flame strikes if you time these correctly you can actually trade three of their opponent's cards or four of the opponent's cards for just a single card of yours. Just make sure you're using it at the right time and it'll help you secure the victory. All right, so that's the deck. Let's take a look at our mana curve real quick. You can see it's not a smooth mana curve. It's not ideal. Um, and there's a light, it's a little bit top heavy in the four section, but where you're making a basic deck and there's not a lot of options. You wanna choose some of your best powered cards. Overall, this mana curve works okay because there aren't a lot of things that actually have a mana cost of five or more. You can see we only have four cards there. So yeah, we're stacked at the four slot, um, but really that's where a lot of your power comes in. So the mana curve's not ideal, but you'll see it performs reasonably well. Let's see it in action. This deck will probably perform best against your friends in just casual matches or maybe against practice matches against the expert level opponents or even in unranked play mode. But I'm going to actually test this deck in one star master ranked play and you'll see how it actually can perform quite well even in that situation. I'm not saying it's ideal in that situation, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Okay, we have a match against a Warlock here. Um, see, here's one of the problems with the deck. Everything is four mana here. So I'm going to get rid of two of the cards and see if I can get something a little bit cheaper so we can play earlier. And okay, we got the Kobold. Hello. All right, and then we got a Polymorph. Okay, he's coming right out with a Blood Imp. I hate that card. <laughs> that card is so annoying to play against because he's stealth and he'll just sit there and, and buff everyone's health on his side. All right, since we're playing a Warlock and it's not likely to get a weapon out, we're going to play the Swamp Ooze to get a 3-2. And that's going to work nicely to beat the Fairy Dragon here. So we're going to trade those cards. And I'll put out my Kobold now. And let's see how he answers that. So it looks like a fairly uh, aggressive deck on the Warlock's part. Oh, Questing Adventurer. Oh, with the coin. He's going to pump him up. And a Murloc. All right, so this is a very aggressive deck. You can see already on turn three, he's got a 4-5 creature with two other creatures on the board. Perfect for a Polymorph. We have to get rid of that Questing Adventurer because they can get out of control very quickly. And we'll take out the Sheep. Job done. Okay, that could have gone really badly had I not had that polymorph there. All right, Knife Juggler, another big card for a fast aggro type deck. All right, so the Water Elemental, again, they probably need to take a, at least two cards to take out the Water Elemental at this point. We'll see how he gets rid of it. He's going to drain life. And he's going to use his uh, juggler. So we did take away two of his cards with our one card. That's a good trade. Like All right, we'll use the novice engineer to see what we get. And we'll play the ogre magi. Get some beef on the board. Also pump up uh, flame strike if we have to use that. Or not. We'll just get rid of the siphon. We'll just use the siphon to get rid of him. Okay. So we're having trouble keeping board control. He's removing our creatures very well. Um, but we're going to ping that guy. We'll bring out the shield master. Then he's going to have to use at least two cards to get rid of it. Let's see what he's going to do. Ooh, a pit lord. 5-8 creature. That's tough. Okay. So polymorph was a very good top deck pick right there. We got to get rid of the pit lord. Because that thing's a little bit nasty. And we'll play another Ogre Magi. And we're going to swing. We're going to allow him to ram his cheap creatures into us. Oh, 
We'll see how this goes. Okay, Swamp Booze. Okay, another Flame Imp. He's just... Wow. Well, uh, he's just loading the board with creatures here. Oh, Shadow Flame. Interesting. Alright, so he's gonna do a lot of damage to my creatures with that. He's actually clearing my board, leaving himself with four creatures. He's in a solid position. But this is where the Flame Strike comes in. Flame Strike, I'm going to deal... I'm gonna take out four of his cards with just one of mine. Clear the board. He's only got one card in his hand. And now I can take control of the game. So I got out the Swamp Ooze that turn. He's actually drawing... He's mill You know, he's, he's, he's taking his own life to get cards. He did bring out a pretty big creature there. I do have a fireball if I need to. Let's let's draw some cards first, see what we get. Another flame strike and the bowler fist ogre. Excellent. Alright, let's use the fireball and a ping to take out this this guy and we'll swing for three. We remain in control of the board. He's drawing more cards. His height health is getting fairly low. He's gonna shadow bolt. Alright, we're back to We lost board control. He's got a Murloc out here. All right, we'll bring out two real big, beefy, fat creatures. Let's see what he does. How can does he have an answer to this? He's gonna hit us for three. Oh, twisting nether destroys all minions. But you can see where our deck is hanging in there. We're we're, we're facing uh, epic level cards, right? Epic rarity cards. Twisting ne nether, the pit lord from before. But you know we're using all basic cards, and we're still we're still in this. Okay, he's bringing out a taunting creature. All right, let's draw a card. Or we can put out a Yeti. And let's just, let's freeze this guy. It's not going to kill him. But we can ping him this turn. And next turn we can ping him and then swing with all three characters. So let's just stop there. Okay, he's bringing out another taunt creature. And he's pumping it up. Alright, so. 3-5. Mortal Coil. He's getting another card. Okay, we've got two damage spells here. Alright, so we'll just use this. We'll clear the board again. Oh, and he quits. So there we have it. A basic deck takes out a, uh, a deck that's obviously using more powerful cards in one-star master ranked play. So this deck can, can actually beat these type of opponents. It's not going to win all of the time in this kind of ranked mode, obviously. But I just wanted to show you that these basic decks uh, can actually work. And I hope you enjoyed this series. You know, if you found this video helpful, hit that like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can be notified when I go live with future videos. And uh, yeah, if this video starts doing well, I'll make a basic deck series for uh, all of the classes in Hearthstone. I hope everybody has a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Take care.